Hi, right, I'm Kevin. So I've made loads of videos about proxies and obviously you can generate proxies from raw materials using various methodologies. You can use the uh, editing suites, Avid, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut. You can generate standalone proxies um, when you've got your footage and you can put them through uh, Blackmagic Proxy Generator, Shutter Encoder, Apple Compressor, Silverstack. I mean, yeah, there's loads of ways to do it. But the quickest way, obviously, to work with proxies is if they're actually generated by the camera themselves. Now, lots of cameras these days do have this capability. I've got a Canon R5C here, and this allows you to shoot 8K on the big CF card, and then on the smaller SD card in it, you can shoot a proxy version of the footage. So literally, you can offload both and then start editing straight away. Um, the C70 over there, that's um, got the same sort of system, got two cards, you can do it on the Reds, um, you can do it on the um, on Harry. And now the newer Blackmagic cameras also have this capability as well to generate these proxy cards. However, as we'll go through when we do this, it's not as simple as, uh, as it can be to reconnect the proxies to the various packages. I mean, you literally just want to offload and you want to link up your masters, link up your proxies and then edit. Some packages aren't as, as uh, good at doing that or can't do it at all. Um, and some sort of want you to stick to their own sort of proxy format. But really the future really is doing the proxies in the camera. As the footage gets bigger, I mean, off that R5C, you've got to deal with an 8K CRM file and um, Canon CRM files are pretty bulky and you've got to try and process through through a computer. The other thing with the proxies is they're very portable. Obviously, you can, you can use a much lower power computer to do an edit and then only use the material and when you can form it, only use the materials that you actually need to finish your edit in the timeline. So you can do a lot with the proxies, but the camera generated way is the best, obviously, because you just walk off set, you've got a proxy version and then you've got a um, uh, a master. Now, there's two types. There's the in-camera proxies, which are always really good because obviously they're totally synced up. I mean, when you press the button on the C70, it starts to generate the CRM file and it starts to generate an H.264 or H.265, I don't know, a proxy version. So they're totally synced up. You can obviously record proxies to an external recorder. How that, however, that does have some caveats to do with the length of the cable and all sorts of stuff if anybody's ever played with an Atmos. I've got a um, Blackmagic video assist down there and I'm basically making a proxy off of this recording into the Blackmagic. And basically when you start and stop, there can be delays. So there can be slight synchronization differences, which can be problematic. Um, but you know, if you're using SDI, things like that, you can get around it because it has to basically be like absolutely bang on because some of the uh, systems just won't agree with uh, um, with, when you're trying to bring things in that aren't slightly aligned. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can, I can make that happen in Resolve or something, where you've got a mismatch of the two things. You'll see in the mismatch in the time code. Anyway, so let's go through some packages and have a look at Resolve. And what we're going to do is literally relink this video that I'm now making. It's only been one file. I may stop and start and make some extra bits so you can see more than one. And, and then we can, we can see how it all links up and hopefully it'll be useful. Anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, so here we are in Resolve. I've offloaded my camera masters, I've offloaded my proxies, I've offloaded my Blackmagic Assist files. So here we are. So in AO24, Real24 is my master camera files. Now I'll drag those in. And you can see they're all good to go. And all I need to do is click up here and nothing happens. This image says the same, there's no proxy attached. So Go back to preferred camera originals. So to link up the proxies, I just go in here, select all my files, relink proxy media, point it at my AO, I'll navigate to that for you, AO25, which was the um, proxy card, select that, click open, it zips through. Now, if I hit up here, preferred proxies, you can see all these icons have gone to PXY, and the picture in here has now gone a color on it because I recorded the um, I recorded the uh, proxies with a color profile on so you can spot the difference. So now I'm in proxies, now I'm in camera originals. So that's really simple.
that's really simple to bring it together. It's just detected it, it's worked it out, and it's great. Okay, so that's the simple way of doing it. So let's just remove these files. Actually, unlink the proxies. Right, they're gone. Now, say we'd been shooting in a raw format and copying our files to the Black Magic to make proxies. So, okay, so bring them in again. And now I'm going to bring in the Black Magic files in this folder. Now, these were recorded at exactly the same time. I put those underneath. And these is what I sort of see is sort by time code, start time code, whatever. So you can see with the time code, if you look closely, they're different. Because obviously there's like a delay, there's a delay with the HDMI cables, even with SDI, I think there's like an offset delay, the time it takes for the camera, for the recorder unit to start. And then at the other end of it, this one says 1511, this one finishes on 1522. So I think that finished first, that finished second. So there's a slight alignment at the front and back of all these, of all these files. So they're, not, they're sort of proxies. I would never recommend, well, you could. I mean, but I wouldn't really recommend working this way. I mean, you can you can do it. So what you can do to, to work with proxies like this. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's get rid of all this. And let's just bring in our video assist files. Now, I'm going to make a timeline out of this. Create a new timeline. Create. I mean, Resolve is immensely forgiving for getting stuff in. And this is why it makes it such a great tool to work with as an editor because it knows, because it's come from the end of the pipeline, it knows all the different configurations of things that you're ever going to get thrown at it. So it's always trying to work out a way to get things in for you, like a master version. So in the timeline now, now we've got this and the video that you've the beginning. It's all in a timeline. Now what you can do, you can go up here and you can click timeline and the other thing here could reconform from bins and reconform from storage media. Now, if I hit either one of those, I'm going to get an alert. So let's try reconform from media storage, which which means not looking at what's loaded into Resolve, it's looking at that I'm going to look at the hard drive for me. Click that and it'll say no for click to reconform. Please deselect conform log. So what happens is on all these files, if I grab them all, you'll see a little thing indicated here, conform lock enabled. Okay, so that basically means it's conformed to the thing in the media pool. If I take that off, now I can try and reconform it, but it won't work. But I'll show you it. It won't work. Timelines, uh, maybe I'll reconform from media. Okay, so let's do this from the original media. So I'm going to go into T7, camera, and I think it's AO25. Has that got the CRM in it? No, AO24 has got the CRM there and I'm going to conform from that folder based on t source time code now you know from what I showed you at the beginning this just isn't going to work is it because nothing starts at the same time unable to reconform timeline big problem however if you think about this you've been editing away with these proxies how many times have you ever completed an edit and you've used absolutely the full extents of your edits so what you can do if you've, you've edited with this if you just grab a bit of it, let's say, I don't know, let's try, get rid of the first couple of frames, that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit, a bit more, that bit, get rid of the end, get rid of the start of that, close that up there. So more like a, I'm probably gonna mess up a couple of these, more like a proper edit where you've actually Let's just zoom in a bit more. Giant bit, do the end one. Let's just get rid of the end of that. That go in. And get rid of that. I didn't even use that bit, so let's get rid of it. Okay, so everything's now adjusted. So now what you can do is I'm gonna come back out again. I'm gonna grab the lot, I'm gonna grab the timeline. Timeline, reconform from media storage, rule 27, source time code. Okay, well, there you go. Now, because I've trimmed out the beginning, see that one I didn't trim. There's no trim on that, so it's not conformed. There's the original Canon. You can see the titling here. Canon, Canon, Canon. Now, all I need to do is trim a bit of this off, either end. And then if I go back up here again and go timelines, reconform from media storage, same folder. There it is, that one's coming. 
So basically, because there's an overlap at the beginning and an overlap at the end, if you've trimmed off a few frames front and back, you can conform it, which basically means I'm now working with the masters. It's not the most ideal process, but it, I tell you what, reconforming is the hand. I did a job a while back, and the only way to conform the masters was doing this. Without it, we couldn't have done the job. It's a really, really clever little thing. And obviously as well, it's basically got another thing here. So if I go back to the media pool, and if I create a new bin, new bin called master, and then let's do this to type, uh, oh no, clip name, here we go. And if I put the masters in there, and then did the same exercise. So if I go up here, I go right click timelines, reconform from bins, now you see my master bin there and there's my master's bin underneath which I just created and it's the same thing. And then you can do set conform lock after all the clips conform. So what you should do obviously, I missed a step there, you should grab it all now and you should conform lock it. Where are you? And you're locked. So that's it, you're, you're done now, you're in the masters. So you see there's like a couple of ways to do it. There's a huge gotcha when you do it with the with the externally generated box of the camera. I think the, um, the cloud ones are fine. I think that there still can be issues with, with basically sound sync and stuff like that on Atmos. I've done a couple of jobs with the Atmos where we've had problems with the sync. It might be the cables and all sorts, but Atmos has got it better, um, especially over SDI. You, they actually generate the camera names into the Atmos. And Blackmagic doesn't do that. But so there you go. That's how you can do that with um, DaVinci Resolve. You can re-bring in and very, very simply, um, bring in all your um, externally generated proxies. Um, there's lots of ways to do it. Okay, so now I'm going to have a quick look at Premiere. Okay, so here we are in Premiere. I've created a, a quick project and I'll just import some media. So let's go into my AO24 CRM. Yeah, there it is, that one. So let's pull in the masters first of all. These are the Canon masters import. And then they go. So Let's just double check I've got this set up. Uh, let's right click up here, meta display and type proxy. Let's tick that on, put that on there so we can see if we've got our proxies coming in. Now, so when you use a medium coder in Premiere, it, all it does, it basically converts the file to the format that you want it to be in, but it also adds underscore proxy at the end. So if you're smart enough, and if you do that, you can do it in the camera to your proxy. So you're shooting in camera proxies and you can actually name your files, this um, underscore proxy in camera, which you can do on a Canon, then this is a very simple process. So right click, proxy, attach proxies, and now it brings up files. And what we're going to do is by file name, as well as media star, we click attach, and then we're going to go into AO25, contents, clips, and you can see here's my uh, pro in camera generated proxies, the MXS, but it's got Canon underscore proxy. That's what I put into the camera to generate it. If I click OK, it just goes and does it straight away. It's now attached to proxies, and here they are attached proxies and the proxy media. So now I've got proxy media. Let's make a sequence out of that. Uh, where is it? New sequence. New bin from sequence, new sequence of clip. Uh, there we go. So there's my file, and then I can toggle my proxies on and off up here. You can see the indicators going down the bottom there. Okay, so that's really, really simple if it's named correctly. Obviously, you, know, you can batch rename if you've not done this to automatically get them to link up and those kind of things. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to file new project. I don't want to say we call this test three or something, create. And then I'm going to close that other project actually, test project on I'll close it. Close project. Uh, don't save it. And then hang on, where's my project gone? Here we go, here we go. Project three, there we go. So we'll do the same thing. Now we're going to use try and conform or bring in the camera generated proxies. So let's bring in the masters. So I'm not camera generated proxies, the ones that were created on the Blackmagic video assist. So there they are. There's the masters back in. Now click proxy, attach proxies. Now we have to navigate to the BM folder. 
actually before we do that because the name stood obviously match secret down here file name let's give it that and media star let's see if we can get that to do it attach bm it's probably going to do something very very premier where it's going to refine the other ones i did before and try and link to them click ok so it's letting me do it error proxy and for which must have matching audio channels that's not great so that's a big problem obviously attach is trying to attach another one let's do two you'd have to do this manually i'd imagine okay that one attach three i mean if you were doing there you go it's got problems it's not having it it's whatever it's done look it's all over the shop here now so yeah not a very pleasant way it doesn't work fundamentally it doesn't work because you have to have something down here a file extension mm, that's not a good one to match up is it really media start well we know the media doesn't start on the external ones file name though the file names doesn't work either so i mean you could probably do this if you try to batch rename all the files something like that now i'm not even going to open up final cut because you just can't do this final cut literally i've tried so many ways i think there's a thing you could do with sony cameras because they generate these mp4s you can actually do the proxies on sony some of the sony's you can't on anything else you can't really i've never been able to get like um, proxies to match on on uh, any types of files otherwise it, it, it's just the way it's constructed avid you can do a similar thing i can't go through avid um on this it's a bit of a bit of an epic but you can relink proxies externally generated proxies quite easily on avid so long as they've been made in a similar format and it's understood by the thing but it's doable but i won't do it on this so there you go i mean it's quite tricky um you know, the external ones on the camera or on the um, blackmagic video assist um you know you can do it resolve resolve you can do everything with um premiere not so much obviously with premiere just as resolve it's incredibly simple to do it when you've named the naming conventions are correct and in camera proxies are brilliant because everything matches perfectly if you're trying to do it off an external system that can be problematic i know as I, I think i said on the resolve element of this video that um you know atmos have got a better way of doing it and obviously the, cl the cloud generated proxies that you can do the c2c proxies they work and, and it's very integrated because up here window you've got a workspaces you've got an extension in here something one of the workspaces is actually where is it where is it where is it I think it's one of these up here you open it and basically you can log straight into frame IO pull down the files into the thing and then you can resync later because they've been fired off the Atmos into the cloud it's very clever um, and that works so there you have it so you know camera generated proxies are the best way to, to go resolve can pretty much cope with everything there's a way in with resolve final cut not happening just not liking it at all avid you can do it um, and premiere uh, uh, again i mean avid you could do it with limitations premier you could do it with limitations but yeah but definitely the best way to deal with proxies is literally make them as you shoot them so you shoot the masters so anyway i hope that was useful